Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. I'm going to be speaking on the video today on the topic 10 Habits of Unhealthy, Unhappy People. The past four weeks, many of you know that I've been riffing off the work of a, another blogger and sort of discussing what they discuss. Not riffing off the work, riffing off the work. There's a difference. But I, I thought that was fun and it was, I thought, good discussion. And I found another blog that I want to do the same thing with. It's by the author uh, Ryan McKenzie. It's a Canadian blog called infobarrel.com. He wrote uh, a posting called 22 Habits of Unhealthy, no, 22 Habits of Unhappy People. And I pared the list down to 10 unhappy, what I call unhealthy, I assume if you're unhealthy, you're gonna be unhappy, habits that I connected with the most and I felt like I had something to say on most of them that was unique and sort of from our perspective. Number one, Ryan McKenzie writes, the, the number one habit of unhappy people, chronic complaining. He writes, the one thing that happy, successful people don't do a lot of is complaining. The chronic complainer tends to always have something wrong in their life. Their issues are always more important than your issues. If you have something to share, they really don't want to necessarily listen to you. Chronic complainers tend to complain about their job, their significant other, how little money they make, how something isn't fair. If you're a chronic complainer, quit your whining, Ryan McKenzie writes, and stop uh, talking and you no, know, and start talking about the good things that are positive in your life and focus on what is good. If you have a problem, sit down and work out a solution. Constant complaining does nothing but push your friends away and keep you in that dark, unhappy place. You, you have good in your life. Find it and share it. So Mr. McKenzie is direct and pragmatic and tells you, you know, the healthy thing to do. I'm going to come at it from a little bit different perspective. This, this complaining about your stuff, we therapists call this vomitous dumping of negativity. We call it triangling. Triangling. Uh, it's not being vulnerable. It's not being intimate. When you do those things, uh, it's attractive and it draws you towards a person. This triangling, it really does push people away. It's like holding the other person hostage as you vent your spleen all over them in a victimy, angry tone. I tell people that my fee for trianglers is a thousand bucks an hour. And that cures triangling really quick because nobody wants to pay the thousand dollars an hour. Triangling and chronic complaining have their roots in victim mentality. Victim mentality is cancer Victim mentality is the devil. And it is by far the worst mental health habit of them all, in my opinion. It casts a pall of negativity, conflict, alienation, bitterness, and darkness over a life and over everyone around that life. <coughs> the second unhappy, unhealthy habit is worrying about the future. Ryan writes, no matter what you do, you only have so much impact on the future and what it has in store for you. Could you get laid off, perhaps? Could you catch a life-threatening disease? He writes, yup, <laughs> you could. The thing is, you have very little control over uh, whether or not these things happen. So why spend your time worrying about them? As long as you have a reasonable game plan and you're living responsibly, you should be focused on what is going in, on in your life now. 
my thoughts. Um, <clears throat> constantly imagining the worst case scenarios will keep you from moving forward with positive cutting edge um, changes in your life that really could revolutionize your life. And yes, bad things do happen. You know, I wish they didn't, but they do. They do in my life. Um, and they're very painful. But if you bring enthusiasm, faith, proactivity, hard work, and tons of energy into your present, it will create a future that's awesome beyond your wildest dreams. The number three thing that Brian discussed as a habit of unhealthy people is a lack of hobbies, interestingly enough. He writes hobbies or activities that you can become passionate about. Hobbies are something that you can do when you have three hours of free time on a Thursday night. Hobbies are skills that you could potentially earn you money if you become good enough at them. Happy people tend to have hobbies. Whether your hobby is kickboxing, playing the guitar, or even basket weaving. Hobbies give you something to do with your free time and they uh, give you some time for yourself. This is time that you are investing in you. Group hobbies also have the added benefit of giving you socializing time where you can make some friends. So my thoughts, our job as a kid is to just play and be a goofball and be carefree. So when we grow up and we have all these responsibilities and a mortgage and a job that um, we still can relax and have fun and so that life isn't so serious. Uh, hobbies breathe joy into your life and they help you escape the heavy burdens that life places on you or that we place on ourselves. So I'm, I'm 55 years old and I still venture into what we call the Monon Center here in Carmel, Indiana, three days a week and I do battle with a bunch of 28-year-old fellows who are really good basketball players. And <clears throat> I'm not so good anymore. I didn't used to be too bad. I'd never had much athleticism, but wherever I had, I've lost. And my hand-eye coordination is, is getting worse and even my shooting. The one thing I could still do is a little sketchy, to say the least. Um, but I just love playing with the guys and joking around with the guys and I can still set a pick, I can still play defense, I can still grab a rebound. Uh, I just can't grab it real high toward, up by the rim. I can, if it happens to fall near me, I'll grab it. So, But today, I, I've been sort of depressed, frankly, lately because I've been getting killed at the gym. The fellas leaving me open. I can't hit a shot to save my life. Can't throw it in the ocean, as they say. For, for weeks now, and I, I actually was having the thought perhaps I should retire, but I went into the gym and my shot was going in, and I actually hit three three-pointers in a row in a game, and and <clears throat> had a wonderful time. Uh, uh, just was a great day, and just a lot of congratulations from the, the fellas, and I just, I left there just feeling joy and, and feeling blessed and feeling young. That's what hobbies can do for you. Um, explore some new hobbies and it will enrich your life. Hobbies will put a spring in your step and they'll help you make some new friends. So this next one I put on the list not because I've got a grip on it or that I even have much to say. I just thought it was important. So the, the fourth one that Ryan writes about is eating poorly. Making bad f food choices or eating too much is not only bad for your health, it can make you feel lethargic, guilty, depressed, and when done for extended periods of time, it typically results in gained weight. Unfortunately, eating poorly is a vicious cycle. Oftentimes, people eat to self-medicate when they are feeling down. 
I do that. They feel great only for a few minutes when they eat their delicious treats. <laughs> but then they feel guilty afterwards, followed by a lack of energy and reduced productivity and bad basketball, by the way. Eating healthy not only makes you uh, have more energy, it also makes you look better, which makes you feel better about yourself. So eat right, look great, and feel great. So this is one that I, I tend to struggle with in my family growing up. There really wasn't enough nurturing to go around and uh, we t so the, the little nurturing we got tended to revolve around food. So through the years, my siblings and I, we've tended to associate self-care and nurturing with food. And I don't think my family's the only one that, that does that. So, so if I'm stressed, I tend uh, to comfort eat a little bit. And uh, so um, in our practice here, we don't have the therapist uh, have all the answers and look at us we're so healthy no sir uh, we, we keep it real and, and we share where we struggle and uh, this is a particular area that that is a struggle for me number five unhealthy unhappy habit holding grudges Ryan writes harboring animosity towards somebody is like carrying around a backpack full of rocks you don't have a problem carrying it but it is a load on your back and life sure would be easier if you could just take it off forgiving will help you free yourself of anxiety stress and depression and allow you to have happier relationships free yourself of the hate and move on so Ryan's saying don't be a hater be a lover um, so I, I wrote um, in my uh, blog, holding grudges is more of that cancer thing, uh, which is victim mentality. Um, I've heard the analogy that holding grudges is like holding burning coals in your hands. Once you have it deeply in your mind and in your spirit that you cannot be victimized in a relationship without your full consent and cooperation and that it's really about reenacting your own family of origin issues it really eliminates the holding grudges issue um, the people that I've experienced the most pain from in my life um, I tend actually to be very grateful towards them and see them as blessings in my life because they're my best teachers and I honestly do seek to have uh, sincere feelings of gratitude for the growth that they have produced in my life number five unhappy unhealthy habit is hating your job Ryan writes with two weeks of vacation, most people work about 1,920 hours a year, and that's about 22.4% of your year, including sleep. So you better like what you do. If you genuinely hate your job and doing it uh, every day is going to cause you endless grief, take the plunge and go do something else being unhappy for close to a quarter of your life it just isn't worth it I write uh, I'm a big believer in the philosophy of do what you love and the money will follow um, I had a great aunt when I was in college studying social work actually it was my undergrad it was I was studying sociology and she pulled me aside and informed me that I needed to seek a different uh, career, seek so, some different education because what I'm doing, there ain't no money in it. And actually, I've, I've done pretty well uh, from a financial perspective, even with a sociology undergraduate degree because I'm good at what I do. And anytime you're good at what you do, you're going to get paid. So I, I just encourage young people and old people, middle-aged people, find something you love and go do it, and do it with your whole heart. 
when you have great passion for the work, getting up in the morning is a joy and it's an adventure and it's a privilege. The next one is self-labeling. Ryan writes, how you talk to yourself can seriously affect your self-image. When you make a mistake, tell yourself, you made a mistake, it's okay, everybody makes mistakes, everybody human. But saying things like you're an idiot or you're a piece of crap, Ryan writes, uh, is gonna lower your self-esteem. This might sound insignificant, but you need to believe in yourself to be happy and calling yourself names presents you from moving on after you've made a mistake. And boy, I tell you what, everybody makes them. So I call this negative internal talk shame. We get shame by being criticized, put down, verbally abused, physically abused, belittled, raged at, being subjected to being around rage as we are growing up. And then as adults, we still have that critical parent or critical coach or cri critical teacher's voice inside our heads. It's usually a parent. And then that becomes the voice that we use on ourselves. Um, so I don't want to talk in length about shame because I've got some other uh, things to cover here. But um, you can learn more about shame by going to, on YouTube, uh, there's a pl special playlist under Family Tree on shame. And you can watch, watch a bunch of videos for free or, shameless plug here, uh, my book, Healing Toxic Shame Through Recovery. And honestly, I only mention it because I know it'll help you. And you can get it from our website, Healing Toxic Shame Through Recovery. Number eight, not having a goal. Ryan writes, <clears throat> Most of the most exciting things in life uh, is setting a goal and accomplishing it. Happy people have a tendency to make both short-term and long-term goals. Short-term goals uh, give you many accomplishments that help build self-confidence and help keep you motivated for the big picture. These goals can be related to anything that is important to you. Fitness, finance, and hobby related goals are examples of goals that you can set immediately. Successful people are constantly setting and accomplishing goals. While lack of ambition has a tendency to lead to mediocrity, uh, limited emotional satisfaction, uh, unhappy people often set goals too. The problem is they set them too high and they don't achieve them and then they launch into that negative self-thinking and beat themselves up. And so uh, the author, Ryan, encourages people to start small, build up steam, because the only thing that stands in the way of you achieving great things is yourself. Uh, I love goals. I love December 1st and thinking about the new year and thinking about goals. I just don't under, understand people who don't set goals. Uh, where are you going? I mean, why wouldn't you want to get better at what you do or impact the world more or get healthier physically or emotionally or make more money? Why wouldn't you want to make more money? <laughs> at least make a goal on, about that um, or achieve any goal that's in your heart that you want to achieve. But if you don't have that goal, it's not gonna just happen out of the blue. You gotta work toward it and have some focus about it. So every New Year's Day or around that week, I'm busy thinking about uh, where I've been and really analyze the previous year. I do this for myself and for our practice and where I'd like to go and where I'd like to take our practice and how are we gonna get there? How am I gonna get there? I put a lot of thought and research into that. I find that process very exciting and it helps me to refocus who I am and where my time really should be invested. Number nine, magnification. Oftentimes, unhappy people have a tendency to blow small things out of proportion. 